Hi, welcome to High Road. My name's Andrew, and this is part two of a beginner series on how to use reverb in Pro Tools. If you've watched part one, I showed you how to actually put, uh, set up an auxiliary track, how to send the signal to that track, and how to put the Dverb plugin onto that track. If you don't know how to do that, go back and watch part one. This video is all about how to adjust the settings within Dverb to get different kinds of reverb sounds. So let's get started. Um, first of all, over here, in case you don't already know, I've got a guitar track that I've recorded. And I've set that up to be running into the reverb. If you've got a big mix or something, I might do a separate video about that too, but this is pretty simple stuff with just how reverb affects one channel. And it's a good way to tell the minute differences and be able to hear them when we've just got a simple guitar signal. Okay, let's go through the settings from top to bottom. So, up the top here we have presets. Oh, not that one, this one. And these are a lot, this is a huge palette of different settings other people have set up for you if you don't know what you're doing. You could start with one of these and then tweak from there. <clears throat> However, we're going to start with just the default one, which is Hall. Uh, okay, so these are seven different reverb algorithms, different styles of reverb, hall, church, plate, room, room two, ambient, and nonlinear. Within each algorithm, you have three room sizes. So I've got hall, small, hall, medium, hall, large. I've got church, small, church, medium, church, large. And by clicking on each of these, this is a good way to get started. You should use your ears to determine what you prefer. Um, there's no right or wrong. For my guitar down here, I'm going to choose Hall Large. So let's just hear what that sounds like again. This is my dry guitar signal. Now I'll add the reverb. So that's pretty subtle. There's not a lot of reverb on there at the moment. So I might even turn it up so you can hear it a bit better. just so you can really hear what the reverb's doing. Uh, okay, so first of all, let's go and look at pre-delay. So pre-delay is the amount of time between the audio signal and the onset of the reverb. In other words, this is how much time it takes before the reverb kicks in. So if you're in a room and you hit a chord on your guitar, it takes a short amount of time for that audio signal to travel across the room, hit a wall and bounce back to you. That's pre-delay. So the reason you'd want to muck around with this is it can sort of change the way the room sounds, or the, I guess the fake room that we're trying to create the illusion of. Um, if we want a big room, then that would probably have a long pre-delay because the walls are further away from you. But also it can just, you know, uh, when you increase the pre-delay, it sort of separates the original signal from the reverb a little bit and gives you a little bit of space. So I'm going to press play now and with, with zero pre-delay. Now I'm going to add that to a fairly extreme number of say 160. Hopefully you can hear how messy that sounds. It's really pumping now. You can hear the guitar chord and then a moment later the reverb starts and it's, it's really distracting. So that's not a good setting for this reverb algorithm. So I'm going to back that off and bring it down to say 40. See what that sounds like. So at that setting there, it almost sounds like a stadium. You can hear like it sounds like it's bouncing off the stadium walls. Right, so it's still too much for what I want. So I'm going to bring it down to about 10 and see what that sounds like. To me, that sounds like a nice big room. Um, and by the way, this setting, all these settings are going to depend on which algorithm you've chosen. They all sound different to me. So I'm, I might even choose eight milliseconds. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay, the next one is decay. So this is the amount of time it takes for your guitar, sorry, for the reverb to start to fade off. If I bring this way down. Well, actually, if I just press play and stop very quickly, 
that burst you're hearing there, that's the decay. If we look at this little volume slider here as well, yeah, that slowly fades off. So that's the decay. If I increase that, you can get some really creative sounds. You may have sometimes heard that on vocalists when they, they want to emphasize one word in a song. Uh, I believe um, Adam Lambert's Ghost Town, there's one word in the, uh, in the first verse which just kind of explodes and um, he's using a long delay on just that one, a long decay, sorry, on just that one word of the verse. Like that. If we increase it to infinity, it just keeps going and going and going. That can be quite fun, but it's not really right for this. So I'm going to decrease that down, and as I decrease it down, it's going to sound like a smaller and smaller room. Hear that? It just sounds like we're in a little room now. So between pre-delay and decay, you can create a lot of different combinations of room sounds. There's quite a lot to be found there and you can get creative with it too. All right, I'm going to skip these two for now and go to diffusion. So diffusion is to do with how thick the reverb is and how early it gets thick. So if I'm uh, adding reverb to a vocalist, a vocalist's tone has sustain to it. So it doesn't need reverb to be thick straight away. Um, so I can turn this diffusion down on a vocalist, for instance, and it, it sort of creates a bit more space for their voice before the reverb gets thicker on the tail end of the, of the note. This, you may not be able to hear this just on this guitar here, um, but that's what it's, I'm just explaining that's what it's doing. Whereas if I turn it all the way up to 100%, I guess you could say it gets thicker earlier. The, the reverb gets more dense. Maybe density is a better word. So if you're recording, if you're adding reverb, I should say to a drum hit, like a snare drum, uh, you might want to have a denser reverb earlier because a snare drum hit is so momentary that it needs reverb kind of to fill out and thicken up the sound. Whereas if it's something like, you know, an electric guitar or a vocalist, which has got a bit more sustain, you could turn the diffusion down and it will clean up the sound a bit and it will add the reverb uh, on the tail end of the decay rather than right at the beginning of the decay. But that's a pretty subtle thing to play with and it works better in a mix than it does on a single instrument, I think. Well, it depends on the instrument. Okay, here we have high cut and low pass filter. Now, you could be forgiven for thinking those are two different ways to describe the same thing. I got a bit confused when I first saw this. High frequency cut and low pass filter. They actually are different. High cut, this is to do with room high frequency absorption. So if you're in a room that is lined with foam, acoustic foam, it sounds dead. The high frequencies just get absorbed into that material and the low frequencies bounce them keep bouncing around a little bit longer. But essentially this is designed to choose the frequency at which the room is going to start to absorb high frequencies. So let me let me run it all the way up to the top, which is off. Okay, now if I roll this down, I can hear a little bit of a difference already, but I'll roll it even further down to say around 1K-ish. About there. Can you hear how that sounds a lot deader now? It's still long, like it's still got the same decay, it's still got the same pre-delay, it's still got the same diffusion, but the high frequency content, it just disappears so quick. It sounds we're in it like we're in a dead room now. If I push that back up, we've got the sparkle back. And if I go all the way up, everything's there. So this, this is designed to make a room sound, I guess, boxier or more, more dead. You can get a closer sound with this. Now we come to the low pass filter. This is designed 
to let the low frequencies pass and it stops the high frequencies getting passed. So you'd use this if you wanted to take the shine off the top of the reverb or if you wanted to stop um, if you've got a reverb that's just so full of high frequencies that it's it's uh, creating chaos in, in the upper end of your mix, then you could use this to filter out some of that high frequency content and allow other parts of your mix to come through. So if we adjust this down, you'll, you'll hear that the reverb becomes less bright and more muddy, I guess you, is one way to describe it. You can really hear it down there. On that reverb, you can hear that it just really, the high frequencies are gone. So if this removes high frequencies and this remove high, removes high frequencies, what's the difference? Well, the high frequency cut, as I mentioned, is designed to simulate room absorption. So it's a more subtle effect. It's designed to make a room sound a little bit dead. You still have the high frequencies, but they decay much quicker than the bass frequencies. The low pass filter, on the other hand, this is a bit more heavy handed and it surgically removes the high frequencies altogether. They're not there at all. Um, or at least it's got a six decibel roll off on the low pass filter. So now let's talk about this slider here. I think I might have mentioned that you don't need to use this at all if you've got your reverb set up on an auxiliary track via Ascend. This is only necessary if you're using your reverb plugin as an insert on the audio track. So if, you're, if you've set it up this way as shown in my video, keep it on wet, don't change it. All right, over here on the left we have an input gain slider. So if I'm playing my guitar signal, I'm just going to adjust this as it's playing. That's zero, no signal going in. And that's maximum. So you might be wondering, what's the difference between playing with this and playing with the send? Well, within this mix, not really any difference at all. But if you had lots of guitars and vocals and drums and bass, and all of them had their own send, Rather than adjusting all of the sends, if you just want a small adjustment, you can come here and adjust. This This will adjust the input of reverb for all of those sends that are going into this plugin. Uh, that's why you might choose to do it this way. Uh, you could also adjust the amount of reverb with this slider, which is the master slider for the reverb track. This is essentially an output adjustment, whereas this is an input adjustment. Um, you're going to have to use your ears on your mix to determine which is the right way for you to go, but hopefully that explains it fairly clearly. Over here on the right, this is not a slider, this is just an output level meter, it just tells you what's going out. So if you happen to overload your reverb plugin and it's distorting, you would see up here that, some, that you, you've gone too hard. According to this, it didn't even get anywhere close to the maximum signal that this plugin can take. But if you were hearing distortion in your reverb, this is where you'd probably see it first. You'd probably see red, red dots happening in the output. Okay, so I think we've pretty much covered everything here. Um, I hope that you have learnt a lot about how to use Dverb um, and all the various settings that are within it. It's a really good plugin. It's free. So if you're after something a bit more unique, you can try buying your own reverbs. A lot of professional mix engineers buy their own, and I've got a couple of the common ones here. I've got Space, which is a convolution reverb, and this is an interesting one because you can, um, you can <laughs> download convolution reverbs of all kinds of spaces, including vacuum cleaner tubes or... Uh, you know, concrete rooms and all kinds of things. And these are actual recordings of real spaces. And another one I've got here is TrueVerb, made by Waves. And it's a really good plugin too. I use them all, all three for different things. Uh, so hopefully that's been helpful. Um, if you have any questions, throw them in the comments. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.